Bangor on a Friday night. But it could be Belfast, Londonderry, Armagh or Newry. The one thing many of our towns have in common is teenagers. Some of them above the legal limit to consume alcohol, others below it, barely in their teens. On ContraPoint tonight, we look at the issue of teenagers drinking on the streets. Is this a regular scene? Yes, yes. How often do you do it? Like every Friday and Saturday night. So it's, it's your own group uh, just out for a yep. little fun? Well, there's lots of different groups around. There's Gothic punks. <laughs> there may be a cult element about it all, but why go drinking in a drafty park on a cold October night? Is it simply to get drunk? Not drunk, not just actually out ourselves. of your mind. Just sort of confident. <laughs> like you don't actually get sort of so you don't remember things, just so that you're, like, I don't know, just so you're confident more. It's cheaper to come down here than to go to a park Bar, and get uh -huh. a bike there. And would there be many people doing this on a Friday yes, night? Yep. No. Yes, no. I mean, you go around no, the whole no, park. No, no, on a Saturday no, night. Saturday night is better. There is no red team, everybody. Not but down here, but there are places. No, the pier's yeah, closed off. It. It's just here. Pier's closed off now, so it's just people drinking here. Park, Castle Park as well. well. What sort of attitude do your parents take to this? Well, very, very know. strict about it. I know. Very strict about know. it at all. Yeah. My mum knew, like, shouldn't be very pleased at all. <laughs> Tougher laws aimed at street drinking are being considered, but there's concern at local level that this is more of a social problem that needs to be dealt with sympathetically. I don't know that it's a problem generation. I think this is a problem we've always had. I think perhaps it's come out into the open more now. But it's not a problem that I can see disappearing overnight. It's not a problem that's peculiar to Bangor or to North Down or to Northern Ireland. It's rife throughout the UK. Now, what do you regard as the, the, the mainstream attack on this? What, what are you intending to do about it? Well, the first thing we want to do is to provide alternative facilities for young people. There's no point in preaching to them and saying you shouldn't be drinking. We have to provide something else for them to do. We're providing an alternative to pubs for young people. We're providing somewhere where they can come and feel relaxed, at ease with each other, where they can interact, build up friendships with people they wouldn't normally associate. What are the ground rules in a place like this? The only rule we have is no alcohol, no alcohol consumption. If they bring alcohol onto the premises, it's taken off them and given to them when they leave. Linda's employed by the local Presbyterian church to run the cafe. The project's a bold initiative, partly funded by the local council to get kids off the street, because there's nowhere else for them to go. It's somewhere they can come and call it their own. There's no, no rules, no hassles. Um, they can come here and, and do their own thing. They can unwind after being at school or tech, or some of them who are employed can come here as well. And it's, it's really somewhere where they can call their own. And they need that in order to, to develop and grow as adolescents into mature young adults. But th these kids are obviously not dropouts. Very definitely not. A lot of them come from comfortable homes. A lot of them are doing A-levels um, or are waiting to go to university. Some of them are at tech, some of them are, un are employed, some of them are unemployed. But they need somewhere to go and there's no at the minute it's, it's grim because we have it till Christmas. After that the building gets demolished because of the, the new developments and we need somewhere after Christmas. So we're working on raising money, on raising the awareness of people in Bangor and in North Down in general and trying to get a place for them. I think the Boulevard is totally brilliant. It has somewhere to go and you don't have to pay to get into it. And you, you play, everybody plays their own music and it's really good and still friends come here. And it's just a casual nature that appeals to you. <laughs> yes! It's just, you know, come down here and rest and everything, you know, and just have a good time. What, what do you think would happen if it closes? Well, most of the people just go out again and start drinking again, because apart from this, there's nothing else to do. So it gives you a real alternative to being out on the street? Yeah, it gives you an alternative to getting drunk. And if you weren't here now, would you be out on the beer? <laughs> no, I couldn't afford that. But that, that, might be a, that might be an alternative? Yeah. And would that apply to a lot of young people like yourself? Yeah, most people, probably at Bank House. And there isn't really much else to do. Is a drink part of your social scene? Is that an important feature to you? No. No, not at all. It's better to come down here. You don't have to be drunk to enjoy yourself here. Just come down here and mix with people. They're always saying that they don't drink because their mums are watching, and that's just not it. So yeah. Notice there's no cigarettes here? Yeah. It's because their mums are going to sit. And what, what would normally be happening? Well, you'd find a lot of people would be over in the sunken gardens over there with a drink.
drunk, but they wouldn't be starting any trouble or anything. Like, the they come in here to keep away from the drinking and all, you know? Because like a lot of the drinkers cause trouble. There's nothing, you know, a lot of the, there's a lot of underage drinkers just go out and have a couple of drinks at the weekend, sit and enjoy themselves and socialise. Maybe, you know, maybe out in a common or something or sitting around. But cause no but there's a lot of ones who go out and get drunk and start fights and all and show off. And that's why I think a lot of the ones in here come to get away off. Come and get come to get away from, you know. Okay, well I'll give you a blank check now. Let's say. What, what would you spend it on if you, if you were in a position to provide facilities for your own group? For youth, it would probably be something along these lines, uh, no, with no age limit attached to it. Something done up. Yes. Would, would that apply to all of you? If, if, uh, if you had a disco but no booze, would you go? Yes. Would What's you go? Yeah. What is, what do you see? Just asking you? That's all? Well, well, of drink then, to the young people? Well, you... Well, you tell me. Because it's very, it's a minority case that actually get violent and start trouble. Just fight for a drink. Views there of some young adults. Others have expressed themselves violently, giving rise to a bad reputation for high-spirited teenagers. The local newspaper carried regular reports. At one time, we, we felt that there, there were simply ourselves, the councillors, and other concerned people who were the, the, the main protagonists, if you want, in the, the campaign to do something about it. Now it seems to be that the parents, schools, uh, youth groups in, in general are all involved now in some way, whether it's through publicity, through their own organisation, or actively doing something. Is this a sense of the community getting together? Very much mm. so. Um, in Bangor in particular, the community always has been very tight-knit. Uh, this seems to be the case again now, where the council are acting in tandem with each group who raises the problem? There are about four and a half thousand um, young people aged 14, 15, 16, 17 uh, in this area. I suppose we surveyed at best about 200 of those and even then that was rather narrow sample because it was in two particular schools. Well what did you find out? We found out that about 64 percent of young people um, said uh, that they consumed alcohol as part of their entertainment lives in, in this area, mainly at weekends, but also during the week. What age group was this? Well, we uh, surveyed 15 and 16 year olds, but I think about 79% of our respondents were 15 years of age. So that was our uh, target area, if you like, for this survey. Um, about 16% uh, of those said that they didn't drink very much during the week, but uh, something like 8% said they drank uh, up to 9, 10 pints of beer a week or more than one bottle of spirits. So obviously that begged the question, where on earth do you get money to uh, spend uh, at that uh, sort of spending level? But we've also discovered uh, as part of this survey that our young people, quite a number of them, actually have part-time jobs. Uh, something like 25% uh, said they had a part-time job after school or the odd evening a week. Now, obviously not all the money is coming from that area, but I would have thought that that was a reasonable uh, indication of where some of the money is coming from. Now, this was essentially a straw poll. What steps are you going to take to firm up that information? I think the council are concerned, certainly, about this problem to the extent that they do want to then take this small piece of research a step further and commission a major statist uh, statistical survey into the whole area of what young people are doing with their entertainment time, um, how much they're involving themselves in uh, the use of alcohol. We're also looking at, uh, in the long term towards provision of some centrally located premises with the sort of facilities that young people want. At the moment we're not absolutely certain of what they want and there's no point in our using public money to provide what are bound to be fairly expensive facilities if they're not going to be used. So we have commissioned a survey to find out what the young people in the area want. What makes you think that the kids want to do anything other than keep on with their drinking? Because every time we talk to young people and ask them why they're drinking, they say because there is nothing else for them to do. Uh, there are, at the moment, there's only a very small council operated cinema in Bangor in a hall. It's not a proper cinema. When the gasworks site is developed next year, there will be three cinemas there. We also hope to have our ice rink uh, operational again, successfully operational next year. So there will be more facilities overall for young people. But we're also hoping that the RUC 
will perhaps try to clamp down further on underage drinking. Uh, we, there are problems of underage drinking here in Bangor in our parks on council property and we would like to try to do something about that. But we feel there's no use flushing the young people out of there and saying you're not allowed to drink in our park anymore unless we provide an alternative. So it's a carrot and stick? Yes. Many teenagers have part-time jobs. Others get allowances from their parents. This comparative affluence leads to comments about poor little rich kids. But the fact remains, the teenage population is growing and their needs must be considered before we have the same laggard-like problem as the inner cities of Britain. And what holds good for Bangor applies elsewhere. Well, there's a number of areas have shown concern. Um, and uh, they individually and locally, they uh, are getting together. Uh, our own officers have been called upon to go and talk to different groups. Which the, areas? Uh, there's Lurgan, for instance, Lisburn. Uh, really, everywhere in the province doesn't escape this particular problem. And what is the common denominator? Why should this be going on? I think it's a question of uh, social attitude, really, to, to alcohol. Uh, uh, and for that reason, it's a matter of education, really, not only of the children, but of society itself, of the problems that alcohol can cause. Uh, I think it can really, it's no different to, than litter even, because the approach, the attitude to litter in Northern Ireland, uh, children emulate parents, they learn by example, so therefore if the parents are doing it at large, or the adults are doing it, the, the children themselves will, will probably emulate that. What are you doing as a trade to cut out underage drinking? Well, what we try to do and I have just completed a survey that tells me about only 2% of people who try to buy drink who are underage come into any of the shops. We ask them first of all, are they over 18? And if they tell us they're over 18, we ask them for identification of some kind. If they do not have identification, our general rule is do not serve. It's as simple as that. We are totally and utterly opposed to underage drinking. What about adults buying drink for minors? Well, I think that's a very serious problem indeed. And we might get 18 or 19 year olds. Now our staff again are always told if they think, they can never be certain. If they think that someone is buying drink for minors, the rule is do not serve. And you're entitled to refuse service under the law? Oh, absolutely. And we do it quite often. Regularly? To an extent, yes. How big do you think this underage drinking problem is? I don't think it's as big as is made out to be. I have checked on a number of our shops and a number of other shops and I'm told by manageresses and managers that only about 2% of people who are underage attempt to buy drink. Now those 2% don't even get away with it at times. What do you regard to be the major problem? I think the major problem really is teenagers drinking on the streets and in public places. We're actively considering the possibility of bringing in an ID card for people who are 18 years and over so that they can be readily identified on licensed premises. If they have an ID card, they get served. If they don't, they're asked to leave. And would you handle that as a federation or would it be done on a pub by pub basis? We would handle it on a federation basis where we would have the cards produced with our members uh, logo on them and they would have the endorsement of the photograph by somebody, in, a responsible person, to verify the, the age. Well, do you not think it's right that, as the law stands at the moment, publicans should be obliged to police their own premises? I don't see anything wrong in this particular one, though I do feel that the law is a little one-sided, that the onus and responsibility of dealing with the underage drinking problem lies fairly and squarely with the publican, whereas the minor's parents rarely seem to have any responsibility put upon them. And what responsibility do they have? Well, the minor is committing an offence. Uh, to be on licensed premises, uh, they are liable, if found, and found guilty, liable to a fine of up to £400. Well, as a minor, they, they come under the jurisdiction of their parents. But the fact is, the majority of convictions are against publicans for allowing underage drinking to take place. That's the case. Well, I mean, the publican is an easier uh, person to prosecute in those circumstances. And uh, that also reinforces the self-policing, uh, which makes the system perhaps work a little better. So the pubs and off-licenses are aware of the problem and are taking steps to counter it. 
On the broader issue, managing our own health is mainstream government policy. In Northern Ireland, a new agency has been set up to initiate preventative measures. It's headed by Dr Jane Wilde. Not precisely sure of exactly the extent of the problem, but a survey which has been done this year does suggest that something of the order of 20% of 13-year-old boys and 30% of 14-year-old boys have in fact been drinking alcohol in the month previous to the survey. How does this compare with other regions of the UK? Well, it's not as high a figure as, uh, for example, England and Wales and Scotland, but it still is a significant uh, number of adolescents. Is it worrying to you? I think it is worrying, and, and there is some evidence, not from Northern Ireland, that uh, Adolescents are taking up drinking at a younger age and are drinking more than they did in the past and that of course is worrying. What, what are the harmful effects? Well the harmful effects of uh, overuse or misuse of alcohol are really range quite widely from medical uh, causes to social um, effects. Obviously the most well known is diseases of the liver such as cirrhosis but there are also effects such as on road traffic accidents uh, where Probably about a third of fatal road traffic accidents are associated with alcohol. Dr Halliday, what are the risks of drinking to young mothers? Well, the, the risks to the, to the baby uh, would, be, would depend upon the amount of alcohol that a mother drinks in the early stages of, of pregnancy. And uh, that has been uh, put at about five drinks a day has been a critical level. Mothers who drink more than an average of five drinks a day in pregnancy have a very high risk of having an abnormal baby. What sort of abnormalities? Well, this would be a baby that would be permanently retarded in growth and in, uh, in mental capabilities, and would also have a high risk of abnormalities of the kidney and the heart and other organs. Have you had much experience of this in Northern Ireland? We, we seem to have quite a few of these babies in Northern Ireland. Um, perhaps 18 to 20 a year are reported to us. And what are the, the chances for those kids? Their outlook is generally poor. Um, why we have such a high rate in Northern Ireland is not certain. Other areas of the United Kingdom where this has been reported have been Glasgow and Liverpool. And these may be areas where alcohol is uh, a greater problem amongst uh, young teenage girls. Well, what about the father? There have been one study to date which has shown an effect of, uh, on the baby's birth weight of fathers drinking before the pregnancy is conceived. And this uh, seems to show that if the father's drinking more than two drinks a day or has a binge of more than five drinks on one occasion, then the baby will have a lighter birth weight than normal. Well, it was once thought that if you went into a classroom of young people and told them about the horrors of drinking, told them how their liver would be damaged, how their um, health and how much trouble they would get into, that that would do it. You would scare them, scare mm. tactics, it was thought. Now there's very strong opinion that that doesn't work and a lot of organisations throughout the world don't take that approach anymore. Oh. Uh, really it's thought now that if you address the problem as part of the curriculum, as part of learning about life and about how to deal with money and how to deal with social activities and so on and make people aware but not scare them into watching you know how much they drink. So the important thing would not to overreact to, to accept it as a, a normal element of experience. Absolutely, yes I would agree with that. Now, what turns a teenage drinker into an alcoholic? Well there are a number of factors. Um, one is they get into the habit of drinking a vast quantity of alcohol. Uh, other factor could be that they have a home background which models that kind of drinking and abuse of alcohol. Is it anything to do with the makeup of the individual, perhaps feeling inadequate or something? I think a lot of young people start to drink because they have no confidence or they want to feel uh, confident talking to girls or mm -hmm. vice versa. Um, and they start drinking, it gives them a bit of confidence. And they're really not aware of the dangers of increasing in a big way the amount that they're actually drinking. Today it is the done thing that they have parties, cider parties and um, beer parties and they have even parties for celebrating getting exams in schools and um, I think it's the done thing for this field that in order to be with the group they have to be drinking 
and then many who are wounded, particularly those who are wounded from their childhoods, who have insecure homes, who haven't felt seen or heard, or who may feel their parents have expectations from them that they can't reach to. These are the particular type of children who fall into the rut of alcoholism. Many of the victims of drink, young alcoholics, end up here at Kuanwara. It's a treatment centre outside Newry, dealing with around 100 patients at any one time. The therapy is tough. It involves physical work. Sometimes it means alcoholics on the road to recovery, nursing those whose addiction is at a critical stage. Sometimes magistrates will recommend treatment here as an alternative to custody. As Sister Concilio points out, it's a growing problem and the victims are getting younger. Oh, I think it's very widespread. In recent years, when we visited schools, we were asked to talk to children of 16 to 18 years of age. But um, nowadays, we're asked to speak to children from their 12 or 13, because in the hope of getting them before they start drinking. But even at that age, many of them have started, and their teachers are aware of it. It usually has caught up in them in their early teens, and they find themselves in trouble. Um, it leads to um, crime. Uh, it leads to r rushing into marriage uh, before people are ready. Um, it leads to, for girls in particular, for pregnancies. Um, it leads to um, all sorts of problems that um, destroy the person and their opportunities for living. This may be the extreme end of a social problem. The majority of teenagers will come through the drink phase unscathed, but some will not. Let me ask you all now, do you think the roots of this drink problem lie in your, your teenage experience? Well, I'd say around the age 14, 15 years old, it started giving me basically problems with the police and just family troubles, you know. I think there was, um... You come from a drinking family, do you? No, no, I don't blame my family for my drinking problem. But um, there was always a feeling of rejection I had and sort of, I was always rebellious towards my family. Well, anything familiar in that experience, Chris? Well, um, I suppose it does uh, follow a, a similar pattern, so to speak. I, I started drinking at an age of about uh, 17, 18, and uh, more or less, you know, whenever I left technical college, along with the lads. And at that time, of course, it, um, uh, <clears throat> one could see it was the only thing to do, and uh, thought nothing really of it, but um, unfortunately progressed. Uh, to a worse stage, but even then, I, I thought that um, you know it was the done thing, and I thought that perhaps it, I, I, I know I didn't realize it was a problem, but I thought I could stop it. Do you know why drink is a problem, Martin? That's the only way that I, I could have killed the pain. The only way I knew to kill the pain in me. What you know pain? the pain that I had with the problems, like uh, family problems, like having a row in the house with the wife. You know, instead of just sitting there anywhere, like it was easier to get up and go to the pub and have that, that drink and things, you know? And what about you, Ian? I never discovered uh, who I was meant to be. And every time it comes around to that time where this maturing starts inside me, I, uh, t I seem to take a drink to kill the pain rather than face up to the fact that I'm still a child. Like, even though I'm 20, 29 years of age now, I'd say mature-wise, I'm probably about 17. For me, as soon as I took my first drink, like, there was no stopping. You know, uh, it was just a complete takeover. I would be something like Keith. I, I, I found that uh, I, I was in trouble from the very beginning with drink. And uh, I found that it was the pressures uh, around my teenage years, from 13 onwards, the pressures of school. Even if, we were told, if I was told at the age of 13 or 14, then when I was 20, I'd be full-fledged alcoholic. I would have left at him. I did laugh at him. I was taller when I was 15. I would advise any young person, if they are at the stage, say, of social drinking, uh, which I started off at one time, to be very, very wary and, and treat alcohol with great respect.
that comment.